bet your ass I am counting it towards my Goodreads goal, but... Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my February wrap-up for 2021. I read a total of 13 books this month, but I am only going to be talking about 12 of them because one is a textbook, so... You don't want to hear about that, it's boring. But I had to read it front to back for one of my classes in college, so you bet your ass I am counting it towards my Goodreads goal. But that's besides the point. I'm splitting this wrap up into two separate parts, so this will be part one where I talk about the first six books that I read this month. So without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> The first book that I'm going to talk about is actually a graphic novel. It is Sticks and Stones, the second installment of the Check Please series, or I guess you would call it a duology because it's now complete, which I am very sad about. But I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. If you are unaware, this series follows a young boy named Eric Biddle. In the first book, he is a freshman, and in this installment, he is a junior at the beginning and a senior at the end. But he plays on the varsity hockey team for his university, Samwell University. And it's basically just the story of like what goes on in that hockey team, but it's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this one, obviously. I gave it four out of five stars. I just didn't love it as much as the first installment of the series, and I don't know what it was about this one that just wasn't as magical as the first one. I still absolutely love Biddy and how wholesome and pure he is. I love these characters. I think they are so much fun, and I am so, so sad that the series is over and I don't get to see any more of them. I absolutely loved Jack and Biddy together. They are just so supportive of one another and they just make my little heart so happy. I think that the more somber parts of the story with regard to Biddy's family and those dynamics was really well done and executed very well. I think that my biggest disappointment with this one was that the side characters that I loved so much in the first book, pretty much Shitty, Shitty was like my favorite thing ever, didn't have a very big role in this one because they graduated last year. So it just kind of sucked not having them there all the time, although I did love when they made appearances in the book, it just wasn't the same. But the ending was very sweet and I do like how it all wrapped up. I'm just sad that I'll never see these characters again. I just want more of them because they're just so cute. The next book that I read was Influenced by Sarah Shepard and Lila Buckingham. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This book follows Delilah, who is a rising influencer, better known as Lila D online. She moves to LA with her family. She ends up being invited to a party by another influencer named Jasmine Walters Diaz who was a childhood star who was trying to move away from that image. While there, Jasmine introduces her to another influencer named Fiona and they all become instant friends. They pull her into their drama-filled world with another influencer named Scarlett who is dating a YouTube star named Jack. So when Delilah wakes up next to a dead body the next day, she is obviously very scared and then the police come knocking, asking questions, and so the three girls need to work together to figure out what happened. This book was entertaining. I would not say that it was particularly a good book, but I couldn't stop reading it. I think that the book does do a very good job in going into the darker aspects of social media, but I did find it a little weird because some of the social media aspects of the book were just off, if that makes any sense. Which I found kind of strange because one of the co-authors, Lilia, is a influencer, so I did like the alternating perspectives between the three influencers, and I think that throwing in the transcripts to Scarlett's vlogs, which were really just like Instagram lives. So I found it kind of weird that they called them vlogs because they were literally live videos, which is not a vlog, but that's what I'm saying with the social media aspects were kind of weird. The terms that they were using didn't make sense. All of the characters seemed very similar to one another, even though they were off dealing with their own personal problems. Their personalities were literally the exact same, so it was kind of annoying to read about. I didn't become fully invested in the story until the murder happened, and then I was invested in trying to figure out who the killer was. The biggest complaint that I do have about this story has nothing to really do with like the main plot of the book, but it was the fact that there was a secret relationship between a 20 year old male and a high schooler and it was just weird because it was never talked about that, you know, this shouldn't be happening. It was just a fact that this 20 year old man was dating this high school boy 
and I just was not here for it. <laughs> I wasn't able to call who the murderer was in the end, which I really enjoyed, but overall this book was just entertaining. I don't really think that it was anything other than that, so take that as you will. 3.5 out of 5 stars. <laughs> the next book I read was a manga, manga, I don't really know how to say that, but it is the Fangirl Manga Volume 1. This is by Sam Mags. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It's literally just the novel Fangirl put in into manga style. I wasn't the biggest fan of this. I did like seeing the characters that I loved so much in Fangirl in graphic form, but it was just missing some of the like pizzazz, I guess, from the original book. I just wasn't really connected to the story as I was while reading the actual book. I do think that this is a great addition to the fangirl world, but only if you are already familiar with the story. If you weren't familiar with the actual story and these characters, I don't think it would be the same. I also think that the pacing was a little off, but that could just be because the manga is split into multiple volumes, so this was just volume one, which only went to a certain part in the book. I did really like the art style though, and I did really love being able to see cast stories of Simon and Baz come to life, but other than that, like, it was okay. 3.5 out of 5 stars. Like, there's not really much to say about it. The next book I have, I am a bit disappointed in how low I rated it, even though I didn't rate it that low. But it is All the Ties of Fate by Adeline Grace. I read the first book, All the Stars and Teeth, last month, and I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. It was, like, my favorite book of the year so far. I loved it. And this one I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars, which I am very, very disappointed in because I thought I was going to absolutely adore it like I did the first book. I was so excited to dive back into this world with these characters that I fell in in love with in the first book and I don't know what it was but this book was just so underwhelming compared to the first book in the duology. I just didn't have the same excitement as I did with the first book while reading this. It was very anticlimactic. I didn't really care about what was going on which I was so invested in the first book it didn't make sense to me. I still love these characters. I think they are so fun and unique and just the found family dynamics between them all is just so well done but I will say I am very bitter about about one of the deaths that occur. I'm still not over it and it makes me very angry. I'm still hoping for my Vitea spinoff. I just find her to be such an interesting and intriguing character. I just think that there were so many opportunities to write a story about her and her adventures. I would just find it so interesting to know more about her past, but I would also just love to see what she's up to now. I just think she's so cool. She's just like the coolest character ever. Like there's not much I can say without giving spoilers about why I think she's so freaking awesome, but but I just love her so much. Overall, I think that this could have been left as standalone, which is really disappointing because I loved the first book so much, and this one was enjoyable, it just wasn't as enjoyable as the first one, so 3.5 out of 5. The next book I'm going to talk about is Dividing Eden by Joelle Charbonneau. I give this a 3 out of 5 stars. This is another one that was a bit disappointing to me. This book follows Karis, who has spent her entire life protecting her twin brother, Andreas, and his secrets. Their older brother, Micah, is next in line for the throne, but when he and the king are killed in battle, the twins find themselves in a set of competitions in order to see who will sit on the throne of Eden next, and it's like the story of that. I thought that this book was going to be so good, and I was just so disappointed. The concept of this seemed so cool, but I just did not like either of the main characters, Karis and Andreas were both just not nice people and I just could not get behind them. Andreas was the absolute worst. Um, there was no redeeming quality to him whatsoever. He was cocky and arrogant for absolutely no reason. Every single decision he made was questionable at best. I think that the amount of miscommunication in this was what really drove me crazy. Like literally every problem that the twins had with one another could have been solved if they had had a conversation where Andreas actually listened to what Karis was saying. Like literally every problem they had would have been fine and this whole book would not have had to have happened if he had just listened to her. I also just found the book to be very predictable. Like I could literally call everything that happened in this book right down to the 
bad guy who wasn't really a bad guy like it was just so underwhelming and just such an average read like it wasn't a bad book and I do think that some people will really enjoy it I just didn't like how predictable it was and I hated the main characters so it just was not for me so three out of five stars and then the final book that I read was another average book apparently this is the wrap-up of average books but it is Soundless by Rochelle Mead I gave this a three out of five stars this follows Faye and her village who have been stuck atop a mountain for many years due to dangerous landslides. The people of her village lost their hearing and the only form of income they have is to use the mine that houses precious metals and send what they find down a zip line to the mysterious line keeper in exchange for small rations of food. Faye suddenly begins to regain her hearing while other people in her village are losing their sight. As resources are dwindling, Faye and Li Wang decide to make the dangerous travel down to the mountainside in order to try to save their village and it's like the story of that. This book was very slow. I just felt like I was waiting for something to happen the entire time I was reading but even though it was so slow it still felt rushed if that makes any sense whatsoever. There was absolutely no world building in this. There was none of the Chinese culture that was promised other than the characters names. If you change the names to westernized names, this thing could have taken place literally anywhere in the world. There also was no fantasy vibe, in my opinion, other than the last three chapters of the book. Like, it just wasn't what it said it was going to be, so I was very disappointed. I did really like how everybody in the village was deaf and communicated with sign language because that's not often seen in books, so I liked that representation, but I just thought that the book overall was very underwhelming, so three out of five stars. Womp womp. Alright everybody, so that was part one of my wrap up for February 2021. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!